Well, I am looking forward to bringing this shave to you tonight. It's got some new things to me, some interesting items. Uh, the first is the main hardware, the Razor. This is a new series from Gillette back in the 40s or something like that. I'll have to get you the details on exactly what year and model it is. Uh, I don't really exactly know. It is the uh, short comb version of the new Razor. And uh, got some uh, marks, you know, under here, but they're very small. I'll have to work on reading them. And uh, so that's the uh, hardware. And it is a uh, three piece model. The handle unscrews. It's, uh, I'm sure it's hollow because the weight, when this is installed, the weight is right here. Very interesting. I love the way that it's head focused. Uh, and then these two pieces come off. So I am going to put on a Persona Platinum Chrome Blade. This is uh, a razor that's new to me. The blade is not and very, uh, it's been a very good performer for me. And uh, yeah, look how the blade fits in. There's four little bits to keep the blade aligned exactly right. I think that's terrific. And just uh, screw it in. A little bit of the blade does stick out the uh, top and the ends here. Um, I don't even know if it's possible to have it be misaligned, but it looks very good. I'm not going to tighten it too. I'm not going to over tighten it. So there's the main hardware. Uh, then we will go with our. Uh, this is a Samoog 830 bore brush that has been soaking in distilled water. And the soap for today. It is this. Velabra. It's kind of the name that I uh, purchased it under and uh, I'm sure that the top part just talks about like uh, you know shaving cream pure shaving cream or very pure shaving cream and so this bottom silver line of text has got to be the uh, I don't know whether Velabra is the company or the actual uh, soap. It's Italian made, as you probably saw. Since the sticker says Falabra in America, often the uh, sticker will be the, the fragrance or something like that. Um, so maybe that's what it is. Uh, the ingredients list is very interesting. Water is the first ingredient. And glycerin is in there, and so I'm very confident that it will work in hard water or soft water. So, there we go. Um, and this, it came in a box. Inside the box was the cake of soap that was wrapped in a uh, wax paper uh, or, or craft style paper, but it was a uh, white, very nice looking. Unfolded and folded that. And inside was the cake wrapped in a, uh, like a, a plastic film. And it was just wrapped like an envelope kind of thing. And then the cake. This is like the actual cake. It was rectangle shaped as you can see in one of the corners I have hooked off a piece for my shave tonight. Um, bought this tin at the Dollar Tree for a buck and uh, so the smell of it it's nice. It's I'm sure there's some floral components to it but it's not overly floral. I think there's a little bit of sweetness maybe some cherry in there. We'll just have to see what comes out during the shave. So I can cap, cap that guy up. Maybe I'll put a tech piece of tape across it and label it. Um, just wanted to have the box for display purposes uh, for you guys. Uh, next is uh, Witch Hazel. I've uh, enjoyed using that as a post shave item, as an astringent. It is Thayer's unscented alcohol free uh, and here's something I did I uh, went to the Dollar Tree and bought a bottle of vinegar uh, 32 ounces one quart um, and then I poured the vinegar 
into an empty container and I'm going to use that to shave, uh, I'm sorry, to soak my brushes and clean them. Uh, you soak them in a little, like I think it's one to five part, uh, one part vinegar to four or five parts water. Uh, soak that, your brush in that for a few minutes. Um, uh, the sense I got from the online uh, video that I watched about that was just do it every month, every three weeks. You know, it helps to uh, remove the buildup that might be on your brush from the soaps and other things. Maybe your skin particles might build up on the brush as well. So it'll help to keep it clean and healthy. Another thing to do with your brush, from what I understand, is to use conditioner on it maybe once a week. Uh, put some conditioner in it and then rinse it out. Because it is, uh, if it is an animal hair brush, um, uh, the synthetics obviously don't have that problem. But uh, the since it's animal hair, it's a biological thing, just like people hair. Um, then if you want to keep those hairs from drying out, cracking, and breaking, then you should put conditioner on it um, or, or something that might have that same effect to preserve and uh, uh, keep the hairs flexible. Um, I'm guessing you would not want to do that while you're breaking in a bore brush. I think that would defeat the purpose. I believe that the bore brush, uh, the goal is to um, cause those ends to start to split and it becomes more soft. So I would wait um, and I would do some online searching to see if you even need to put conditioner on a, uh, a bore brush. So don't trust me on that at all because I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but maybe it's worth some research on your part to see if you're interested in doing that. Uh, so then what I did was I took the uh, distilled water and poured it back into the vinegar bottle because this keeps a lot better under my sink instead of a huge gallon bottle of uh, distilled water because I like to use distilled water in my uh, lather creations for a lot of my soaps because uh, some of them are some of them do not whip up very well with hard water uh, the last piece of hardware that you haven't yet seen is my shaving bowl Dollar Tree bowl about three and a half inches high and I whacked the bottom of it with handle of a uh, business end of some needle nose pliers to create the divots and I think it helps me generate lather. I did, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pre-soaking, uh, blooming, allowing the soap to bloom. I put about an almond, almond and a quarter's worth down in there, uh, flattened it out really thinly, and it has had a chance to bloom nicely. Now let's see what kind of scent I get. Yeah, about the same from the, uh, from the bar. It's, uh, it's nice. Uh, there's a few scents from America that I've tried uh, that are basically just kind of cologne duplicator scents, but this seems to be, um, as well as the uh, Prix de Provence 63, uh, these are just um, kind of scents with character that don't necessarily seem like they're trying to duplicate a, uh, you know, a perfume, a cologne. All right, let's get to this. Um... So this is the short comb version, the long comb, a little bit more about this razor. The long comb, uh, these little teeth come down just a little bit more and uh, people do find sometimes, uh, I think most of the people did find a uh, difference in the performance of the two. So we'll just see. It wasn't a consistent difference. Some people liked one better than the other. Some people thought one was smooth and the other wasn't or, and then vice versa. So I will see. What it work, how it works with me. It's one of those true, your mileage may vary scenarios. I, uh, this wasn't a hard soap, um, but it was, and it, I did have to push down and kind of pull on the soap to, uh, to get that piece out. So it's not too soft. Um, so there's that. And so I think that I'm going to shake out my brush really well before I load it because I've already got some water in here. And we'll just see. This brush is not fully broken in yet, but I put a uh, lather up with it uh, maybe two days ago that was really good. And I didn't, uh, so I believe it should be fine for this task. 
the, uh, the lather I'm already getting. Looks pretty decent on the brush, except for some medium-sized bubbles. But then you can definitely see those bubbles in the uh, in this. So let's just flip up and see what. Oh yeah, that's that's coming up. I haven't added any water yet, except what was in the bowl, and maybe it was um, half a teaspoon to three quarters of a teaspoon. And look, I have already gotten a nice looking lather. I like to go at it for a minute or two just to let whatever water is in the brush combine with the soap so that I see exactly um, how thick the soap's going to be if I don't add any more water. So you don't want to over add water and wow this is really I mean this is yogurty Wow Italy nice job I'm pretty sure there's some cherry cherry in there you know like Sella has that uh, kind of cherry flavor Got a little it's nice but it's got other stuff to it um to make it more than just a sweet and this is super thick so this uh, lately I've been using uh, uh, did a soap commander little sample last night it was really thirsty I had to keep pouring water into that thing uh, and but look this guy is thick and we are talking thick amount from just a little bit of water um, Wow, obviously I'm going to have to add, yeah, I bet this is one of those scenarios where I, uh, where the soap just kind of explodes in quantity exponentially, like it slowly gets more, and then you add just a little bit more water, and then boom, you're just dripping with suds. I make sure my hand is dry and uh, kind of clean and not oily, then I have no problem holding on to this bowl. One time I tried to whip up a lather and I, my hand hadn't been washed too well and it was slipping, slipping out really uh, in a big way. Yes, yeah, shoot, already we've got enough to roll with a uh, three-pass shave. I'm going to keep going at it. I like a thick lather, um, but wow, this looks so good. Soap Commander did really well too. It was it was a great looking lather. Uh, I've seen online there's a uh, cold water method to breaking in bore brushes. Um, where you basically uh, you put it in cold water um, up to the, to the where the hairs stop you know you don't put the whole handle um, uh, and then you put that in the fridge and then uh, once a day you pull it out and work it move it up and down on a towel or you know something like that and then you put it back in the fridge and do the same like maybe the next day maybe two maybe it's two or three times a day you have to do that and then i think after three days or so then uh, something has changed uh, maybe it helps those hairs to split to make it softer maybe it helps it display but I think as far as i know those are the two things you're looking for um, but then one person said you know that method does uh, help it with one of those attributes, but not both. So, for what it's worth. And if you want to, uh, just Google how to break in a bore brush. And I'm sure, and also you can look, uh, type in cold water method. You know, break in bore brush cold water method, and I'm sure you'll find plenty of information. So, we are looking good. 
tons of soap, thick, thick lather, thick lather, very thick, very impressed with this. It was recommended online and uh, glad I decided, and uh, such a small amount, holy cow. Um, really, really, the size of a, an almond. Um, look at that. Great. Smell. Just a, a nice, pleasant, uh, you know, manly smell. Manly? It's almost either way. It's almost unisex. It's not feminine at all because there's not the florals coming through. Um, You know, I don't know. I don't know. Too hard for me to detect. Uh, I'll probably use what's on my fingers as a pre-shave kind of thing. I wonder if I should add a little bit more water. You know, why don't we do that? If anybody's watching out there, um, is there a disadvantage to uh, keeping your your like this kind of lather thick, you know, really thick. Does that prevent it maybe from bonding with the skin and forming a slick protective layer or is thick just as good, you know? I'm kind of curious about that. This is huge. Very happy with the lather. Okay, look for the sheen. Yeah. Wow, it's got it. I don't know what that means. I've heard it thrown around. I've heard it as good. So I mentioned it on my video. I assume that his machine is in correlation with slickness. I should have showed you the size. And I even doubted myself. I thought, man, I want to make it. Maybe I should put on more. Put more of the soap in there. But... Learn my lesson. And this is still thick. I'm not thinning it down too much at all. This is still luxuriously thick, I think. I've got my soap cave, my lather cave going on there. I think I need to just go ahead and shave with this. This is great. All right, so I am going to uh, pre-wash and rinse my face, get ready for the shaving. All right, let us... Get our lather on. I like lots of it, so I go ahead and cake some on from the beginning. Do a little bit of scrub. I got a feeling this thing might still be generating some lather. Should have not put quite so much on, extra on the brush. Lesson for you. If you're going to paint on some more later, then maybe do some scrubbing first. Because you do need to get into those hairs and kind of get the soap around them so they kind of stand up and are ready for cutting. So the soap is supposed to help with that, from what I understand. And then it's also supposed to act as a protective layer between your skin and your razor blade. Provide something called cushion and something called glide. Glide makes sense, you know, it's, uh, it's not stopping on your face. It's kind of just uh, moving through. It looks tremendous. Am I getting any kind of fragrance right now? Not much. It's not. It's fairly even weak, even when I kind of wave this in front of my face. So, uh, but I tell you what, it's kind of generally pleasant. Um, when I was mixing it up, and it feels amazing on my face. It's so good, and the lather looks so rich from just such a small amount of soap. Holy cow! 
nice. It is great to have so many great options to choose from regarding soap. So here we go. There's the uh, Persona blade inside of the, the new razor. I do not, this is my first time with this razor. I will be working on finding the right angle here. I'm going to start kind of with a closed angle for my that's smooth. Uh, one of the nice things about this razor is that uh, the clamping action, the vice-like action that holds the blade in place is um, it goes really close to the tip of the blade compared to some other razors. So I'm not getting any chatter, you know, um, it's not even very verbal. And I'll show you now the, uh, see that clamp just, just on it from the center all the way out until the very edge. Um, also, it doesn't look like there's too many places to, for the soap to go in the hairs, but it just rinsed very cleanly. Obviously, it's an open comb, so some can fall between the teeth, you know. But, uh, okay, going good so far. You know what? Maybe I'll do this side uh, as kind of a, a closed angle and maybe I'll open it up on the other side. We'll see what happens. Uh, this Persona blade has been used uh, maybe one or two times before. I need to remember the light touch. Need to remember that. Just use a light touch. You're not trying to dig. You're not trying to remove a bunch of hairs. Looking pretty good so far for pass number one. Okay, now we're going to have a little bit more open angle here. That's very interesting. The, uh, the head seems to be dragging a little bit. Slowing me down. So I believe I'm going to switch back to that closed angle. That, like a 30 degrees or something that might be more typical. For a lot of wet shavers. You know, because you're maneuvering it, and it's, uh, I don't miss the length. I've got big hands, and uh, sometimes I like to have some length there, but the weight of it is so much in the head, I don't miss, I don't miss the handle length at all. All right, I'm going to rinse this, and then we'll get ready for pass number two. All right, upon inspection... That has given me a nice, close shave. Look at all that. Um, as far as my cheeks go, I don't even need to do another um, pass on them. One pass, I believe, is great. Maybe this razor is a little bit on the, uh, you know, in the aggression range. Maybe it's kind of mildly you know, moderately aggressive. So it's just going to efficiently clean me up. I'll tell you right now, this bore brush may be on its 14th use, 14th or 15th. And so it's, if I've got some razor burn that I'm dealing with, it's a little stiff for my particular face uh, when I scrub. So that's when I usually uh, we'll pull out my badger and use it for the shave if I feel like I'm at risk of some razor burden from a previous shave. Just save this for when my face feels a little better. I am certain that will change from what I've heard. This will get really soft. 
just it takes a little bit to break in. You don't have to scrub your face quite this much, typically for the second and third passes, but I just like to. Okay. Cross grain. I will not be doing an against the grain pass, most likely. Um, my skin just doesn't like it. Not much for the razor to get. grain I usually start from here and go down here this way because my hair grows is this way and here it's all circly and weird Nice little razor. So this is the short comb version. I need to remember not to put too much pressure. Just let the, there's pretty good weight in this head, just let the weight of the head do the work. All right. Yeah, this has done a, a really good job um, on this area right here, uh, partially due to the blade even being a persona. I've had great luck with those. Um, but, uh, but this, the razor is also uh, getting that blade right where it needs to be. And, I, and this is only after the second pass. And a lot of times after the third pass and a touch-up with uh, nor kind of normal sharp blades, uh, it, it's not as, as good as this. So this is good. Uh, I'm going to wet myself down get ready for the third pass. So uh, while I'm using this uh, and shaving, I'm not really catching a big fragrance. It's very light, but it's, it's pleasant. Um, it's kind of gender neutral, just a nice, uh, it is a, it does seem like they spent some time balancing it out and no one ingredient kind of shines as much. Uh, and so you're, maybe it's a little hard to pick out some of them, but, uh, I, I like it, especially considering the performance and the great lather that I was able to generate. Holy cow. Um, I, I, uh, as I rinse, I'm feeling really a good slickness uh, to it. My face is feeling a little bit of irritation. Um, I assume it's because maybe this razor is a little more on the aggressive side than I'm used to. It could be that, you know, my, my uh, face is responding to something in here, but I'm going to guess not because there's just not much strong, uh, you know, there's not like a, a wood oil, you know, uh, that's in here that's kind of bothering me. So we'll just have to see. Might have to use this. I'll, I'll use this razor again sometime with a existing soap that I've already tried to isolate the variables there. know if I should shave my cheeks anymore. I don't need it. I'm rarely able to achieve a baby butt smooth shave since I don't do an against the grain pass. I did it one time with a 1940s style Gillette Super Speed uh, and a Gillette Silver Blue 
razor blade and uh, it felt great at first but the uh, the next day my face was um, was feeling rather uh, irritated um, nothing that the balm did calm it down uh, but then when it came time to shave the next day it was it was very tender all right so here we go uh, since my face uh, my cheek area has already gotten really well I'm not gonna bother with another against the grain shave just gonna you know take it easy and just get any little maybe small stray hairs that might be there since I know it's probably already done well in a good situation already This is a cross grain pass from the other direction. I'm trying to be as light as possible. Adam's apple will often be a trouble spot. Oh, that feels really good. That that got it. This is a good combination. Persona and Gillette New. Okay, I gotta be strategic about this. Want to, if I get going the wrong way, it will irritate. Right here will be the rest direction. Right there, it switches. I could feel it right there. Probably generated a little bit of razor burn right there. I could feel the blade. Uh, so, I'm going to guess that this little puppy is moderately aggressive which means that's probably the reason I'm getting such good results here I may end up with a little bit of irritation but yep I've also ended up with a great shave it's not a baby butt but I'm not going against the grain so yeah a little bit of irritation uh, throughout um, probably due to the uh, aggression level of the razor uh, so it's possible that uh, the what needs to be done is I uh, need to maybe change my angle a little bit somehow so I can try that next time. Uh, maybe a pre-shave oil. I wonder if that is a possible solution. Uh, and that was what? That was a third pass. It feels great. This feels this terrific. Love this this soap. Man, those Italians. They have figured out something. Now I was able to get my Adam's apple very closely. Uh, much closer than usual, and but I feel no irritation right there. So whatever angle I was using at the time must have been just right. All right, I'm going to rinse this off and put on some uh, witch hazel. You know what, upon further inspection, I uh, noticed that the Adam's apple area was good, but just right above it really needed a touch up. And uh, so I'm going to hit that again. And I'm going to do some kind of nick. This is a cross grain effort. Oh yeah. Feels good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm not going to go any further or I'll get rash.
excellent with that. Uh, I did take care of the uh, hair just above my Adam's apple. It's uh, nicely shaven now and the part I did get over here as well. So uh, it's not perfect. Uh, not like if I had a, a feather in one of my other favorite razors. Um, but uh, it's really, it's really good. Um, and I mean, come on, this is, this is history. This is history. And uh, I get to use it on a regular basis. Maybe even every day if I wanted to. I mean, who knows who held this razor? Who had it in their trunk? Carried it across the ocean? Who just, just don't know. I'm uh, grateful to have it. Uh, so I did do the uh, uh, astringent, the witch hazel, and uh, I like to aerosol it with a spray bottle. Just hold your breath, don't breathe that in until you find out if that's safe or not and uh, it helps out. I believe I will also do some balm. Oh, I wanted to mention one other thing. Uh, yesterday, I tried a sample from Soap Commander of Integrity Unscented. This is what it says. Apparently this was given out at a meetup. It's the aftershave balm, and it does contain menthol, so I'm guessing it's unscented menthol. Uh, menthol is the focus there. Um, and well, the menthol did bother my skin, so I won't be getting any more menthol. Uh, in about half an hour, the menthol effect was done, and my skin felt amazing. This does cost, you know, ten times as much as uh, Nivea. What I usually use, Nivea Sensitive Skin Post Shave Balm. Get this at Walmart for about $5 or Amazon for a similar price, uh, but you buy three of them. Um, works great. My skin feels really good afterwards, um, but, the, uh, but this made it feel even better. Ten times as better? No. Uh, but you let your pocketbook judge because if a... Uh, if that's going to last you, if that bottle of expensive Soap Commander aftershave uh, balm is going to last you six months, then maybe it's, you know, worth uh, split that price over the month. You say, well, you know, for such and such, I'm willing to have a, an even better feeling on my face, then yeah, it might be worth it for you. It sure was, it sure did feel good. So I could see why people, uh, why people get that. Uh, this is my current fave though, so I will go ahead and put some of this on um, since I do feel some irritation. A lot of times I don't do both the balm and the uh, witch hazel, it's just not necessary for me. But if I get if I get a good patch of irritation, then I go ahead and throw this on. Got a great list of ingredients from what I understand as well. Um, so, Soap Commander, thank you for the free sample. I ordered uh, some of their, I paid for some of their samples, and they gave me a one-shot use of the, uh, actually, I could, probably, could have probably gotten two out of this, um, of that aftershave balm. That's good of them to do. Let's think about this scent again. It's just very mild for my nose um, right now. But, uh, so definitely it's not going to get in, in the way of any kind of aftershave that you might want to throw on. So that's cool. Um, the, uh, uh, but it's better than being unscented. Uh, you do get something, uh, something from it. And uh, I don't know, really, I really enjoyed it. Very happy to, very happy to have it. Uh, stick it in that, stick that square slash rectangle into a... Uh, little tin and you're good to go. I guess you could have, I could have kept it in the plastic and then just kind of hook, uh, lately I've taken to, you know, hooking pieces out with my uh, fingers 
um, instead of swir uh, instead of swirling the brush on it. Um, I think maybe I can uh, control how much is used more that way. I saw one guy do that in a video, and I thought, you're nuts. Why would you want to take the time to do that? But I think I like it. Uh, distilled water was used to soak the brush and to uh, bloom the soap. Massive lather production. You saw how much soap I kept putting on my face on the, even the second and the third um, passes, and I've still... I've still got enough to do another couple of passes. So uh, I am impressed with this soap, with the quantity that you get, with the small amount of soap that you put into it. I'm impressed with the thickness. It's so easy to get a nice yogurty uh, lather with this. I'm very happy with that. Uh, the bore brush did well. Um, so uh, in my opinion, um, this is a good combination. It's got some uh, moderate aggressiveness to it. Um, and so just uh, tread cautiously and um, I will see if I can find that, find that right angle to maybe not end up with too much irritation. But on the other hand, get a little, if you're willing to take on a little bit of irritation to get a quick, efficient, close shave, then maybe, maybe it's worth it to you. So, I'm very happy with the combination of the Persona. Um, and this was the Persona um, Platinum, I think. Yeah, Platinum. It says Platinum Chrome underneath the Persona. Um, so, very happy with my acquisition. Uh, I was also able to get a, uh, a long comb version. So, we'll just see. Uh, see about that. We'll see if the long comb is a little bit more forgiving. Uh, maybe helps you maintain helps me to maintain an edge that uh, an angle that does not uh, bother my skin as much. Uh, maybe I'm in that camp. So very uh, very happy with this little piece of history and a great shaver. So uh, hope that helped you. Take care. I did want to get back with you. I found the after a little googling, I found a date range for this little guy. Um, the, uh, it had three patent numbers on the bottom and, uh, also of note, you can see the color difference between these items, copper, brass, brass, copper. And I got a feeling these are going to, these razors are going to last a very long time. Uh, but since the top is copper, I need to make sure I don't over tighten that. Um, word was also that this model came with kind of a gold wash, but it very soon uh, would kind of disappear. And of course it has. Um, but this, based on the uh, three patent numbers that are on the bottom there, this you can date this razor between... Uh, 1932 and 1941 that's when this model was made and the uh, the newest latest patent number was uh, 19 was published in 1932 so uh, about a 10-year window a 1930s edition uh, razor most likely since that's where most of the group falls that's just a tremendous piece of history uh, you'll split the difference in, say, 1935. Or maybe we split the difference in, say, 36, um, which is more accurate. Uh, so that's about an 80-year-old razor. So here's a little tour um, of this little guy. The copper head. The uh, profile there. Uh, just because it should be said, the fact that it's an open comb razor, see the little teeth, um, that means it's open comb. Uh, generally, it'll be a solid bar, and that's called a, a closed comb or a solid bar razor. Um, here's the handle. This was a bar 
type handle. That was the name of it. It, it came with about half a dozen. Uh, this series apparently came with about half a dozen different handles. I really like it. Closed on the end. It was possible. I did move the blade around a little bit. It was possible for the blade to be slightly misaligned, but not by much. So, an 80-year-old razor. And due to the materials and workmanship, it will probably go another 80 years as long as it's put, taken care of in a reasonable way. So, just wanted to uh, let you know. Some of the Gillettes have a date code. <clears throat> It'll say L4 or something like that. And then that tells you exactly the date and even the quarter that the razor was made. But uh, no such luck with these. They didn't start. They weren't doing that with these. So, excellent little piece of history. 80 years old. Wow. Uh, it's a privilege. All right now. Take care. Bye.